Imagine just waking up one day and finding out you are forced to live the rest of your life inside a video game. But not only that, you'd be greeted with a quest where you must conquer the world in a set time or else you will get vanquished to the Shadow Realm forever. Now that is exactly what happened to our boy Jaewoo. He was just a normal dude who loved to play Roblox but now he finds himself as a level 1 demon lord peasant and time is already running out. Fortunately for him though, Bro remembered exactly what game world this is and here he must corrupt female knights and adventurers to gain stronger and even more powerful. Regardless, we had a flashback to less than a week ago when Jaewoo was still a normal loser playing video games all day and all night. But at that time he was too busy giving a 1 star review to a game he just bought. Initially, he bought the game called Sussy Dungeon Master for the gameplay, but we all know someone buying something that has Sussy in the name must be a true Sussy Baka. Anyways, he was only a few hours in until he hit a brick wall and began raging like Prime Tyler 1 due to him being unable to defend his dungeon from a bunch of high-level warriors so he's basically a sore loser. To make matters worse for him, Bro basically lost his entire playthrough because he forgot to save so he just got sent back to level 1 by a bunch of female kingdom warriors who look like they should just be Victoria's Secret Runway models instead. Nevertheless, after receiving the biggest beatdown in all of history, he went on Steam reviews to give a scathing 1 star review before going to sleep since we all know it was actually all a skill issue. But upon waking up, our boy found himself back inside Sussy Dungeon Master. But this time there is no log out button or even a way to save the game. So welcome to the Walmart version of Sussy Sword Art Online. Nonetheless, as Jay was unable to find a way to wake up and return to the normal world, he ends up getting ganked by a bombshell named Julia asking him if he remembers her. Turns out, this elf-looking girl with very crazy large, spicy tender chicken breasts happens to be his number one secretary whom also informs him that she has been waiting for him to wake up for hundreds of years. After our boy discovers that he just awoken from a thousand years of slumber, he instantly remembers that Julia is the same supporting character that guides the player as soon as they load inside Sussy Dungeon Master, but in person she looks even better than he could imagine. But as he continues to stare at Julia's massive mounds while she's busy trying to explain to him what has happened to the world, she suddenly gets super happy and points out the fact that Jaewoo's woo-woo has grown incredibly more than usual. Of course, Bro's a bit agitated that he just got called out like that out of nowhere, so he tries to play it cool and orders her to continue on, allowing Julia to finish explaining the status of his dungeon and what he needs to do. Our boy then learns that he can still place down monsters and traps in the dungeon, just like the base game, but the main difference here is that he can also pop up in the dungeon itself, making it so that if he claps any adventurers, then he will be able to level up as well. However, mere seconds after Julia explained the rules of his current dungeon, Bro instantly got up from his throne looking very sussy and ends up ordering his secretary to spread her cheese and crackers in front of him. Upon hearing his very sussy order take place, Julia gets visibly shaken to her core because she's probably thinking Bro got a stinky log hiding underneath since there is no way he was able to take a shower over the span of a thousand years. Regardless, she freezes in place and refuses to do anything whilst trying to calmly explain to the level 1 demon lord that now is not the time for that, but the dude is a menace so he ends up trying to lift Julia from the ground with his own hands. He then tries to cosplay that Puff Daddy type of party by himself, so he goes and uses both hands to give Julia a 10 finger discount on the watermelon she did not have for sale. So things are escalating faster than I thought. After finishing playing with his secretary's soft pillow like toys, Bro whips out his awakened mammoth fruit and tries to slide it into Julia's forbidden fruit holder, but before he was able to enter it, a magical book appeared out of nowhere. But when Jaewoo tried to ignore it, as he is too filled with the ultimate sussy bake of flow, the book abruptly opened and began glowing purple where it then pushed his awakened mythical fruit away from Julia, swiftly saving her from the danger down below. Nevertheless, the sussy turn tables turn on our boy when he gets given a quest to become strong enough to do anything he wants against his secretary. But if he fails to complete all the requirements to do some rice cake destroying in one year, then his life force will go straight to zero. So to no surprise to anyone, Bro quickly retracts his order of Julia, spreading that mac and cheese in front of him and ends up trying to apologize, but before he could do so, she alerts him that humans are approaching the dungeon. Suddenly, the same book from earlier appeared again. This time it's giving him a tutorial quest to stop the approaching warrior party from destroying his dungeon. And if he is able to succeed, then he will get rewarded with a 3-star summon and 2,000 renown. But since Bro has already played this game before, he decides not to put down any traps or monsters ahead of time and instead chooses to show up himself with no defenses, thinking that tutorials are always the easiest. As such, Bro gets ready to face a full party of five adventurers by himself. Luckily though, Julia helps him out and reveals to him that two brawlers, one ranger, one magician, and one priest is on their way. 
after discovering that the party contained two females, in the form of the priest and a brawler. Bro gets super excited, causing his dragon sword down below to have a massive growth spur again, so it looks like he truly is ready to level up. Fast forward 30 minutes later inside Jaewoo's dungeon, we find the whole party already on the run where one brawler already lays flat on the ground while both girls looked like Jaewoo wanted both of them to have invisible armor. And as time slowly went by, Jaewoo continued to toy with the party by masterfully using his abilities to send waves of attacks that made sure neither of the girls would get injured. Instead, it constantly lost pieces of their armor which showcased their precious assets. Eventually, the ranger had enough of Jaewoo trying to play with them. So he shouts at the top of his lungs for the girls to run from the dungeon since this is clearly not a low level one, so it looks like this guy is a simp and is taking one for the team. Unfortunately for the beginner level ranger though, Bro is facing no ordinary foe as Jay Wu is easily able to catch every single arrow from him with absolute ease, almost as if everything is rigged for them to lose. Our boy then decides to catch a whole barrage of arrows until the ranger was down to his last one. But since Bro is a menace, he ends up catching the last one only to return the arrow with a gift to his head like some kind of headshot only ranked demon. So now with only the pink haired girl and the priestess left, our boy begins monologuing like an evil villain telling the girls that he truly wanted some kind of combat experience but claims they were all too weak for that. As such, Jaewoo's words easily baited the pink-haired warrior to attack him. But when she mustered up all his strength to land a direct blow, our boy literally just put out his left hand which easily deflected the attack like nothing even happened. She then continued on attacking left and right like a relentless ex-girlfriend who never got over you. But our boy entertained her by glancing each blow with ease. But eventually, he had enough and decided to use his other hand to grab hold of her. Instantly, the pink-haired warrior dropped her giant axe without a single thought, and after Jaewoo placed his glowing hand right atop top of her head, dark magic began to fly out of her brain like some kind of ancient magical curse. Mere seconds later, her armor began slowly disintegrating piece by piece, allowing for everyone to see how blessed this pink-haired warrior was when she was born, so clearly our boy knows her father must have been a baker in his past life. Nonetheless, Jaewoo finally removes his hand, and upon doing so, the brawler kept levitating in the air as if something is taking hold of her mind-body connection. So the only thing she could do is yell at our boy to let her go in peace. Unfortunately for her though, her words fall on deep ears since she is talking to one of the sussiest demon lords you will ever encounter in anime, so she's out of luck, and the worst part is that Jaewoo ends up enlisting her in gymnastics mid-air. Now that the pink-haired warrior is busy going to the Olympics for such epic mid-air splits, our boy takes the opportunity to further investigate all the things this unnamed warrior could provide him, including the largest personal balloons he has ever witnessed. Shortly after cosplaying Inspector Sussy Gadget, to check everything out himself, Bro ends up whipping out his blue eyes white dragon right in front of the stuck warrior, causing her to drop her jaw in fear of a monstrosity. But before Jaewoo proceeded to attack using his special Minecraft edition of his Ender Dragon, we learn that this pink-haired warrior is actually a girl named Andy, where she always appears in the tutorial as someone you will always be. Now throughout the entire time our boy got to play the game before he got teleported in, he always skipped the cutscenes involving her since you saw her often but this time it's in person and these NPCs looks more enticing than usual. Anyways, our boy tells her to cheer up and tries to explain to her that she should be super thankful right now that she gets to do a sussy one versus one duel with the demon lord, because it's his first time ever in a thousand years. A couple blinks later, Bro stays true to his promise and enters his massive dragon straight into the Valley of Andy, causing the warrior to experience the greatest trials and tribulations she has ever went through in this fantasy life. Regardless, Andy yells out that the attack is too strong for her to defend against, but Jewu is not named Jay No. So Bro continues his offensive like a rabid dog let loose causing bright lights to shine onto Andy's face. After 30 seconds of non-stop attacks using his One Piece, Mythical Fruits, Bro gets surprised that Andy is able to continue on since he did not know anyone could easily go toe-to-toe -to -toe against his Prince Behemoth. Suddenly, at the one minute mark, Andy begins trembling waist down so it looks like she is about to cross the finish line, but she tries her best not to only for her to end up yelling that she is hitting the climax of the mountain. Now with Andy experiencing her first ever explosion jutsu causing her water fountain to leak all over the ground, our boy decides to stop his invasion as he does not want to break down a sea level adventure this fast. As such, Bro takes a 5 minute break to surf Reddit as he wants to know if Faker won this year's worlds and upon learning his crazy comeback as the unkillable demon king, Jaewoo decides he wants to be 1-2 and proceeds to snap his fingers. 
In an instant, Annie found herself being dropped down slowly by the same exact dark energy that made her unable to move earlier, where our boy then proceeded to start round two of their duel, and this time he is not holding back. But in literally under 30 seconds, the menace chose to activate a hidden skill of his allowing him to increase the sensitivity of his opponent's feelings by a hopping multiplier of 5, causing heart eyes to instantly appear out of nowhere. Bro then smiles and attempts to make it look like he did not do his eyebrows like a girl today, whilst increasing his attacking power level second by second, causing his opponent to continually jump from different dimensions of bliss. Nevertheless, Jiwoo's expertly aimed thrusts and swing attacks ends up making Andy go crazy, so she ends up non-stop smiling like some kind happy person but clearly, right now, she is trying her best to control the demon lord from taking over. Unfortunately for her though, she succumbs from the perfectly executed ganks coming from our boy. So she ends up telling Jiwoo to do whatever he wants with her special valley as it is now all his thanks to his never-ending abilities. Anyways, our boy ends up completing four rounds of experience grabbing with Andy before throwing the warrior back on the ground as the brawler literally passed out from the sheer force of his ender dragon. And upon finishing, Bro shifted his eyes right to the priestess. After witnessing her best friend get destroyed like a piece of pumpkin on Halloween, the priestess attempts to create a holy barrier and places blessings upon blessing buffs on her hoping that our boy cannot break it. But just like Andy, she faced the same fate, as Jiwoo easily broke through her strongest barriers where he treated them like it was just some kind of silent fart to him, allowing him to quickly get into prime position for an attack. This time, Jiwoo decided to start off their one versus one duel without him having to resort to some kind of dark magic to make her levitate, and instead, he chose to sit on the ground with her to make this more like vanilla ice cream everyone is used to. Nonetheless, shortly after starting his ISO offense, we learn that the priestess of the party is named Amy, but even though she is just a C-level priestess at this point of the story, she is actually a Sanctus candidate. So if anyone decides to send her life force to zero right now, then it is basically game over for our boy as there will be a hidden mechanic that will activate where a bunch of overpowered holy knights will appear immediately to send him to straight to Valhalla. But on the flip side, if Jehu decides to work hard and try to corrupt her to the best of his abilities, then Amy will transform into a valuable power he can use till the end of the game since she will become a vital piece needed for the chance of victory. Back to the present, our boy decides to go the path of not ending the game right now and chooses to just play around with Amy, using the priestess as a real-life squish monkey that will one day allow him to rice cake, destroy her over and over again. But as he continues on playing with Amy's squish mallows, she tries her best to break free from his grasps while shouting out loud that as a priestess, she knows exactly what he's trying to do, so she promises to never become a sussy baka. However, upon hearing Amy loudly proclaiming to him that she will never join his dark side, our boy just flashes a big smile in return and proceeds to point at her forbidden treasure cove, explaining to her that her cove is totally saying something different. Turns out he was right, so upon Amy checking out what is happening down below in her water fountain area, she realizes that she has had a leaking party the entire time causing her to question whether or not she is actually true to her beliefs. She then proceeds to freak out like never before, busy wondering to herself if she has been living a lie her whole entire life since she never expected to react this way even under intense duress, as she is always trained to become a holy one. Unfortunately for her though, her true sussy dark side continues to show itself as Jewu proceeds to teach Amy how to become one with her sussy Becca self by still playing with her tender juicy squish mallows. So with Amy having no explanation to what the heck is happening to her, the only excuse she could come up with is her telling our boy that he must have done something to her, knowing full well that something must be up for her to react this way. It's then revealed that Amy is actually right, she would have never reacted this way if Jiwoo never injected demonic energy into her, but since she has divine power within her, then the sensitivity levels must be going through the roof after the collision of powers. Regardless, Amy begins to succumb fully to the dark side and upon seeing her almost cross into his realm, an ominous aura starts to surround her boy whilst asking Amy if she believes her god will protect her at her time of need. As such, Bro brilliantly executes his plan to corrupt Amy, and the first step is to willingly let her join him so he does his patented spicy sausage whip out in plain sight, causing her to almost instinctively slurp down his slurpee with no regret. However, Amy is able to catch herself lacking last second and recoils back to stop herself. So to big brain Amy, Bro ends up telling her he would never rice cake smash someone that isn't willing as there is always someone else who is. Our boy then leaves Amy behind in a corner and finds himself moving towards a fully recovered Andy instead, and this time she really wants to go for another round of rice cake destroying so she instantly calls in the dump truck. 
After showcasing the used dump truck to the Demon Lord, Andy ends up surprising both Jeyu and Amy by turning around, allowing for our boy to start the duel where she gets to face Amy while giving her the best seat in the entire room. With no time to waste, both our boy and Andy continue another one versus one duel right in front of Amy, causing the priestess to wonder what took over her since her best friend always tried to protect her and hold her honor at all times. Mere seconds later, Andy began making faces that would go viral on social media, so she ends up asking for our boy to unleash all his lactose-free milk inside her fridge, causing Amy to almost want in on the action. However, Bro warns Amby that if he actually unleashes the torrent of dairy towards her way, then her life force will 100% deplete to zero, but she does not mind at all. So our boy decides to fulfill the wish of the brawler.